And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. It's 1-855-400-7282. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember our website. It's michaelsavage.com. The new book is coming out, The Countdown to Mecca. Now, it's going to be available on May 12th. But it's available right now on the website if you go to michaelsavage.com. You also get the latest stories and updates. Start your day at michaelsavage.com. Pressure grows on Marines to consider lowering combat standards for women. Washington Times with the story that apparently two years ago, Army General Martin Dempsey, nation's top military officer, laid down an edict on the Obama administration and their plan to open direct land combat jobs to women. If women cannot meet a standard, senior commanders better have a good reason why it should not be lowered. Today, the, quote, Dempsey rule appears to have its first test case. The Marine Corps just finished research to see if female officers could successfully complete It's rigorous infantry officer course. Now, I especially want to hear from those that have served that whether or not, I don't think it has to be that you are a Marine, but whether or not Marines, should they consider, should we consider lowering combat standards for women? Apparently, a big part of this, you know what's interesting is you think about, I mean, obviously women serve as police officers, women serve in the military, women serve as firefighters and various other jobs. But one of the main criteria that seems to fall short is, in fact, you they have to earn the designation of infantry officer. 29 women who tried, none graduated, only four made it through the first day's combat endurance test now the marine corps officials said it didn't have the data on which proved the toughest but one particularly demanding upper body strength test is climbing a 25 foot rope with a backpack full of gear a candidate who cannot crawl to the top fails the test traditionally see 0 for 29 performance as a call to arms by those inside the Pentagon who are determined to have significant number of women in the infantry. Now, the question, you do have other countries, obviously, that have women serving in combat. Is it, in fact, do you think, are the standards outdated? Is that the part that should maybe be re-looked at? Or is it just that, the fact that maybe for this type of infantry that women candidates for whatever reason are unable to complete it so i think the the real question we'll talk about it at one eight five five four hundred savage if you're a woman that has served maybe you're a woman that's even taken that test but the pressure is now growing on the marine corps to consider lowering the combat standards for women. You know what's interesting is the story is not pressure is growing on women to adhere to the standards that the Marines set. The pressure is growing on the Marine Corps to lower the standards. And those on the other side argue the standards are not realistic. And they point to other countries. Now keep in mind, United States, we are the finest fighting top military power in the world danish females fought in infantry units in afghanistan norway places no restrictions on women roles and drafts them for mandatory military duty canadian women 
serve in combat units. And physical standards are scientifically correlated to essential combat tasks. In New Zealand, females comprise 6% of the officers in combat and operation branches. I think this is one of those classic, do we, do we lower the standard or do you try to bring people up to the standard? Apparently, the Marines are under pressure to re-examine exactly what the standards are. Are those standards necessary? Are those standards? I mean, that's pretty telling. You have to admit that you have all of these women, all of these women in the military serving honorably. And yet when it comes to this particular test and the ability to do that, and it also, I think, don't you think it's interesting? We are constantly told there's no difference. I mean, there's without question been a move to try to make everything gender neutral. Anyone that has spent any time in a a school recently, children, everything is constantly trying to be gender neutral and trying to ingrain in young, young minds. There's no difference between little boys and little girls. You shouldn't just have little girls playing with dolls and you shouldn't just have little boys playing with toy guns and soldiers. And yet now we have the Marines are being forced to consider lowering the combat standards for women. We're going to talk about that. Again, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You know, there's another story I came across in Marine Times where a a tough tattoo regulation is sinking a stellar Marine courier. That apparently now there are certain Marines that got tattoos and it's now going to prevent them from continuing in their service. And many of them say, hey, listen, when I was in the trenches at Afghanistan, it certainly didn't seem to bother anyone that the I had these tattoos. And now you have people that have served with distinction and serve honorably of their country and suddenly now being held back. But I come back to the standards. And if a standard is if a standard is unrealistic, the Washington Times wrote an editorial saying, you know, you, you need more information because you have to determine if this is a realistic standard. In schools, we're constantly dealing with standards. I mean, you hate to have a situation where any standard is lowered. Every standard, don't you think it should always be you want to, you know, in sports, we call it you coach them up. You want to bring them up to the level as opposed to lowering the bar. We're constantly seemingly lowering the bar. But that said, it doesn't make sense if, in fact, you have all these women that are seemingly qualified in all these different areas, and yet in this particular test, they're unable to pass it. But you think of some of the missions that maybe would be sent out on some of the operations the the uh different assignments that are sent on you need everyone completely at their tops and that would not be a situation where you would want any of the standards lowered but suddenly now is it is it trying to accommodate and adapt or is in fact you know more political correctness of lowering it you know, I'm not surprised in a way that this ha- this is happening under the Obama administration. I mean, if anything, people set a goal. We want to have a certain number adhere to this. And then you have, then is that realistic that, that uh, those that are taking part, in this case, it would be women in the military, whether or not they can, in fact, achieve this. Now, if you'd like to read the story... It's actually on our website. If you go to michaelsavage.com, you see all the latest stories. We are going to talk Marco Rubio in the news under fire for an interview that he did in Spanish, where he's actually talking about immigration. Hillary Clinton is out on the campaign stump in New Hampshire today. We're going to bring you some of the sound of that with her fake campaign that she is uh, trying to seem like she's talking to to real people, see who she runs into today and whether or not she takes off the dark sunglasses. But whenever you see a story like this, you have to admit, I I mean, you hate to have any 
scenario where we're in fact lowering standards. There has to be something more behind it. And, you know, now the pressure is growing on the Marines on whether or not they should lower the combat standards for women. Maybe maybe it is a matter of uncertain assignments or whether or not maybe it is just unrealistic for some of the assignments and roles and regiment that they're put on when you're talking about the United States Marines. So we'll take your calls on that as well. Now, again, I, I would especially like to hear if you're a woman and you've served our country, maybe you have, maybe you currently are serving and you have specific, maybe information about this or know exactly why that is, or maybe, maybe we shouldn't lower. Maybe the standards should remain where they are. It's just a matter of those that are participating need to try to raise the bar. Maybe we need to become more realistic. Maybe it's only certain missions. And we'll talk about that as well. You can call into the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE or it's 1-855-400-7282. There's also a tremendous story about someone finding some dog tags. Wait till I tell you about this. Just how long ago uh, that they believed that they were lost and found. And uh, we'll talk about that as well. It's John DePietro sitting in for the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. We're going to come back. We'll take your phone calls. You are listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. One eight five five four hundred Savage. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. You are tuned to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember our website? It's michaelsavage.com. Make sure you visit the website. Dr. Savage's new book, which is available right now to pre order Countdown to Mecca. You can pre order it. You can also see Many of the bestsellers that Dr. Savage has written. It is going to be available now May 12th, but you can pre-order it now at the website at michaelsavage.com. Pressure grows on Marines to consider lowering combat standards for women. How often do we hear about lowering standards? How often do we hear about we need to have people raise up their game. Well, as a result of two years ago, when Army General Martin Dempsey, and again, Washington Times with the story, the nation's top military officer, laid down an edict on the Obama administration's plan to open direct land combat jobs to women. If women cannot meet a standard, senior commanders better have a good reason why it should not be lowered. The Dempsey rule appears to have its first test case. The Marine Corps just finished research to see if female officers could successfully complete its training. And right now, a diplomat must be able to earn the designation of intercy officer. 29 women who tried, none graduated. Only four made it through the first day's combat endurance test. Marine Corps officials said it did not have data right now on what part of this proved the toughest for women. But one particularly demanding upper body strength test is climbing 25 foot rope with a backpack full of gear. A candidate who cannot crawl to the top fails the test. So you have 0 for 29 performance as a called arms by those inside the Pentagon determined to have a significant number of women in the infantry but at what cost they're on the lookout for standards they believe are no longer relevant in today's battlefield at what cost do we want to promote people and lower the standards or is it a matter of that maybe the standards are outdated 
we're going to take your phone calls on this. And, and before we do, I want to point out, and as we've talked about, it, in some ways it doesn't stand to reason. We're in every other occupation. You have women that are successful, who complete all the training, are able to match the standards, and are wildly successful. Whether it be in our law enforcement or firefighters or even in different countries that have females who have women on the battlefield and are able to achieve success. But I think what has people on edge or leery is the fact the pressure from the White House to try to force this to happen. It's not a matter of whether or not, in fact, you have a number that are coming up. And how important is, in fact, this test, this climbing to the rope with full backpack? How often does this truly happen during the course of fighting on the battlefield or in the course of action or, or out there? We're going to talk about this. Also, Marco Rubio in the news. There's also a new poll out where Jeb Bush continues to lead the field for the Republicans. And meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is continuing her campaign, this time in New Hampshire, trying to see and talk to, quote, just normal people, trying to have an unscripted campaign for president as just one of the normal, regular people, even though... When she encounters regular, normal people, if they're not part of the campaign and the way it's situated, she doesn't even acknowledge them. We'll take your phone calls on this and more. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. For listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can join the program. Call us 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Our website is michaelsavage.com for all the latest stories, breaking news, everything we talk about, everything, all things Savage. Check the website. It's michaelsavage.com, where, of course, it also has a very special treat. The new book by Dr. Savage, Countdown to Mecca. You can pre-order it right now on the website. Now, it will not be available until May 12th, but you can pre-order it right now, along with all the other bestsellers from the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. Now, we are going to play for you a little bit later in the race for president. In a Spanish interview, Marco Rubio now says it's important not to cancel Obama's executive amnesty. Florida U.S. Senator Marco Rubio offered a measure of support for President Obama's first executive amnesty program deferred action for childhood arrivals during a recent interview he conducted in Spanish this past week. Now Rubio's comments mark a reversal of sorts from some of the criticism he offered last year. This is going to continue to be a bone of contention and a major focus within the Republican primary. And here you have Marco Rubio, who has come out still somewhat soft support. Right now, to lay a CNN poll, Jeb Bush is the front runner, 17%. The rest of the pack, especially Marco Rubio, right around 11%. I think this is going to be a determining factor with the Republican primary and who exactly is going to be the Republican nominee. There's also a story today. Will Mitt Romney at some point jump into the race? Will the 2012 candidate from the Republican Party get into the race? Romney has said he's not. 
But until there's a front runner, where will that come down? We're not sure whether or not Marco Rubio is ready for prime time. You know, I also saw a headline. Is the country ready or can we have a president and vice president from the same state of whether or not Florida would produce both the president and the vice president on the ticket? But a story that everyone is talking about today, and I think this is more a sign of the times of the Obama administration and life in 2015, is pressure growing on the Marines to consider lowering combat standards for women. Should the standards be lowered because the standards are unrealistic when it comes to exactly the capabilities or maybe the requirements of women in combat situations? Or should the standards be lowered because they're outdated and it just does not apply? Look at women who are police officers. Look at women who are firefighters. Even look at the number of women who are athletes on a professional level. And yet, then what does it say the Marines feel they need to consider lowering the combat standards for women to move up the chain? 29 women tried this rigorous test where there's a, a rope 25 feet long and they have to climb to the top with a backpack full of gear it's very upper body strength demanding and of the 29 women that tried they were 0 for 29 now you have all these other countries that have women serving and how many times does that actually come into play where they would have to You know, between that and also the Marco Rubio story, I think it's very disappointing. I understand voters are concerned about the rhetoric the candidates are going to say and exactly what they're going to say when they're running for president and how much they're going to go back and forth. You know, do you notice there's starting to be this attitude that if you're against illegal immigration— You're going to start to hear this drumbeat that you can't win a Republican primary, that somehow you're out of touch, that those that are against, those crashing over, and you've seen the story where they're just walking, continually walking over the border, and that somehow that that's racist. That's not fair to those people, that somehow if you feel that way, you're out of step. You need to get with the program because you can be sure that Hillary Clinton and the Democrats, they're not going to be speaking against it. They're going to be speaking for pushing the fact that President Obama's executive amnesty, that they should be given a chance to stay here. They should be given a chance to vote. How many come over the border? In their eighth month, eighth month of pregnancy, or ninth month even of pregnancy, and then give birth, and then those children are considered American citizens, and then we have to pick up the full tab. We have to pay for the hospital stay. We have to pay for the doctor visits, the prenatal care, and then once the child is born, what is the What is the cost of that? How is that fair to the American children? Think of all the cuts in your community, in the schools, and how now there just isn't enough money for many of the after-school programs, or there isn't enough money for many of the supplies that children want or need in the schools, and constantly told that there simply isn't enough money, and the taxes never go down. And yet no one ever talks about the cost of our hospitals, of our schools, of the number of people who don't belong here, who are not citizens, who were not born here, and yet they get to send their children to school for free because they don't pay taxes. And they get to go to the doctor for free. And they get to get their meals for free. And they're given... Section 8 housing 
or different benefits that either Americans are not given or that people that truly need it are not even given the opportunity or made aware or wouldn't even in many cases think of going into many of the programs. Think of many of our military families that could use some of these benefits, that could use some of these programs, and they think nothing of allowing these people that come crashing over the border. And I love that story last week where they have so many cameras now on the border and show gangs coming in, people carrying guns coming over the border, strolling over, not a care in the world, coming right over, and nothing is done to stop them. And we have to continue to fund it, and you have to fund it, and you have to pay for it. And all of this is done on your dime, and we are the people that then stand up and speak for you. Or how about the fact that the Obama amnesty program is really just geared towards Texas in trying to turn that state from red to blue to forever change the presidential elections, to forever change. Think if the Democrats were able to capture all the time, not just California, but also always Texas. You would never have another Republican ever elected to the White House. And that's what they're counting on. You have one group, the Republicans, saying it's wrong. They're breaking the law. They're trespassing. They're cutting the line. They're violating the law. They have no right to do this. They're not citizens. And then you have the other party, the Obamas, the Hillary Clintons, saying, telling them you have just as much right as anyone. You deserve to be here. You should be here. Don't listen to them. They're mean. They're they're racist. Don't listen to them. You should come here. You will be taken care of. Your children will be, don't worry about the money. We'll handle it all. You just make sure you get here. Almost like a friend inviting you on vacation. Don't worry about a thing once you get here. We'll take care of all the costs. All you have to worry about is getting here. That's the message from the Democrats. That's the message from the Obama White House. And now it's going to be a matter of which Republican candidate is going to hold firm. Who is going to continue to speak that truly represents the people whose country is this who does it belong to who fights in the wars who puts their life on the line who pays the taxes who keeps the hospitals open and the schools open you know how many of the people coming over the border carry with them a mexican flag or a flag from guatemala or some of the other countries, or countries I should say, in South America. Why? Because they don't consider this their country. They're not willing to put their life on the line for this country. Many of them just want the benefits that go with the country. They don't actually, and are not willing to step up for what it, it really means. You have people that are telling them, don't even worry about learning the language in the country. You speak whatever your language you want. We'll adapt. We'll change the signs. We'll change the language. You don't even have to know how to drive. You don't have to know English in order to know how to drive. We'll get you the license. And then you have those that are trying to represent us and represent the rule of law. And now it's going to come down to the Republican primary. And you can count on, without question, Which party do you think the media is going to go after and portray in a negative light? It's not going to be the one that's holding firm. It's not going to be the one. They're not going to portray them in a positive way. The New York Times and MSNBC, they're not going to. No, they're going to turn it. Wait till the first Republican debate. It's going to be all negative. You can already see many of the tones coming out of it because that's not who they want to play to. They like having the president in office. They want to keep the president in office. 
they want to play to that crowd, to that John Stewart, Bill Maher, MSNBC crowd. That's how that is going to be portrayed. You don't hear about the thousands that still continue to come across the border. All you're going to hear is negative spin about the Republican Party. And who's going to be the first one to break? Maybe it is. Maybe more people are switching. Jeb Bush is the front runner right now, and people know where he stands. Our phone number is 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Again, our website is michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. I'd like to call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's to go to Joe on line five is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Joe, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Joe. John, thanks for uh, taking the call. I'm at two points, if I can. Go ahead. The first is that the Marine Corps, like all four branches of the service, when they give you a backpack to go on a mission, okay, they do not pack that backpack full of superfluous garbage. It's stuff you need to achieve success in the mission. If anybody has ever noticed the most iconic military picture, actually photograph, ever taken, I think we would all agree is the Iwo Jima photograph. Okay? That's right. If you've ever looked at the terrain of Iwo Jima, it's extremely mountain. There was good climbing and hiking uphill with backpacks on. So that is a part particularly of the Marine Corps' mission. And so for us to turn around and say, go ahead, for, for us to say to a second lieutenant, a commissioned second lieutenant leading a platoon, uh, you know, on an assault, that, uh, well, I guess you can't lead the assault, second lieutenant, because you can't climb, you can't scale this uh, this building or the side of this cliff. Yep. It's just insane. Joe, should we lower the standards in any way? I'm sorry? Should we lower the standards in any way? Why should we? You, there, 25 years ago, I'm in the doctor's office waiting on the delivery of my first daughter, okay, or at the hospital. I'm reading a Time Magazine article. They had turned around and done an efficiency test, the Army did, on carrying stretchers. You know, they call them litters. Right. But so just, it, 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 it's a yes or no, Joe. Yes or no. Should we lower the standards? Should never lower the standards. Okay. All right. Let me go to Eric on line three. He's listening on WSBA in Pennsylvania. Eric, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Eric. Hey, Joe. John, go right ahead, Eric. I'm sorry, John. I was a combat engineer with the Marine Corps, and I served with a handful of females in the Marine Corps. And what it boils down to is when the Marines go out on a deployment, for a long period of time, especially the infantry, they go out and they're out on their own for long, like seven or eight, nine months. And the main problem, because I saw this happen in Afghanistan, was with these females, it was a hygiene issue, you know? Forget about, they can't physically do what a male Marine can do. Some of them can. But when you put them out on their own with no supplies, no showers, and... And and we're going to talk about it more. You're listening to the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember, our website is michaelsavage.com. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. I'd like you to be part of the program today. Just dial 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. Don't forget our website michaelsavage.com. 
Facebook.com, all the latest stories, news, and also you can pre-order Countdown to Mecca, the latest book from the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. Now, it's not available until May 12th, but you can pre-order it right now at the website, and that is michaelsavage.com. You know, we're always hearing about standards, whether it be standards in education, in different elements, different careers, different types of occupations. And right now, this story in the Washington Times, and the story also appears on michaelsavage.com, pressure grows on Marines to consider lowering combat standards for women. Should we lower combat standards for women? It seems to have come down to one test. Very demanding, upper body strength, 25-foot rope, full of gear. 29 women tried it. Well, only four made it through the first day, but they were 0 for 29, apparently, on that test. What do you think? Let's go to line two, and that is Cheryl Ann, who's listening in Dallas on WBAP. Cheryl Ann, you're up first this hour on the Savage Nation. Hello, Cheryl Ann. Hi, John. How are you? Very well. Go right ahead, Cheryl Ann. Well, you were talking about immigration earlier. Is that still okay? Yeah, go go right ahead. Okay. Well, I just had a, my thoughts on it. I'm a public school teacher, and I, I really agree with you on the burden, the financial and the cultural burdens that we get when the people, you know, when they come here. But I'm kind of more, I feel like it's a law problem. Like, we need to change the laws, not that the people can't come here, but they can't come here and we pay for it. Well, a couple of things, Cheryl Ann. You know, they, they are coming here, and the people that are supposed to be enforcing it, they're really not stopping them, are they, Cheryl Ann? No, but I mean, like in pre-K, I think everybody should be able to go or nobody should be able to go, or there, there can be a low-income standard, but not a language. We make our laws make it so easy and unfair for people that have a language problem that we change everything about our language and we as teachers have to go to ESL and learn how to teach other languages and no other country does that. I mean, they come here, they should learn our language, they need to pay for their hospital bills, they need to, I mean, it's, what do other countries do? They don't change all their laws to accommodate. No, no, they don't, Cheryl Ann. Thank you for the call. You know, but what we, the comment was, was just the fact that all those students that come in here and they're not paying taxes and yet they're fed most of the time lunch and breakfast and they get a free education. And every time we hear there's no money, think of the amount of money that would be available if all that money was not spent and you had all these illegals in the system. Let's go to line seven regarding lowering the standards. Jordan is in Kansas City listening on KCMO. Jordan, you're up next. This is John DePietro and you're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, hi, John. Thanks for having me. Hi there. Call. Very welcome. Uh, my sister, I don't know if this is the right word, but she was fortunate enough to go through this training. Uh, we've had several conversations about it, and her comment to me when I asked her what she felt about it was basically they have no business being in combat, combat. And I asked her why, she said, because they can't meet the physical requirements that all the men meet. And she told me that... Uh, they'll just end up getting all their comrades killed. Um, And, you know, this whole thing is supposed to be about equality for women and stuff. And she actually found out from an uh, article that she read herself that they were lowering the standards and said it kind of defeats the whole purpose of, of this because yet again, they're, they're still treating women differently. So um, she said also that uh, there's actually been a lot more than just this one study. Uh, They're actually getting ready to, do what she called a, um, a fake deployment unit to California right now, actually. Um, and they're, they're comparing men to women, making women run on the treadmill uh, with gas masks on, masks on uh, all, all kinds of crazy stuff going on with that right now. But uh, her final comment on that was that uh, they just need to leave females well, combat entirely. Really? Jordan, so your sister went through the Marine training, and she felt that way, that they don't belong in combat? Well, what about all these women in other countries? What about women that are in law enforcement or firefighters? What if it just comes down to this one test of you have to climb a rope 
with your full backpack on and 25. How many times do you actually have to do that out on the battlefield? You know, I, I think the only comment is, what about the one time that you do need to do it? Well, thank you for the call, Jordan. If, in fact, there would be a time that you would have to do that. Steve is listening on line one on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Steve, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Steve. Yeah, thanks very much for, uh, I rarely... In for Dr. Savage. Go right ahead, Steve. <laughs> I'm a retired Navy commander, and I've got, uh, I think the count is now five uh, lieutenants or captains that are nieces, or I'm sorry, nephews. Um, the problem here is one of manpower management, because every year... Um, the, you go through, you look at what the uh, service requirements are, and you match it against your retention and recruitment, recruitment numbers. And you make adjustments depending on whether you need additional people coming in yep. or you can have people go out. So if you remember a couple of years ago, the criticism was that we were – we needed people in, so we were lowering the education standards in order to attract more bodies. Right. So, you know, now we're it, it's really faced with the same situation. The other thing you got to keep in mind is the ratio of you know warriors to support people. And when I was in, it was something like one to fifteen, hmm. and I think it's even higher now. Right. So. You know, and I don't see it as a White House thing. It's every year you got to go through this. So when well, but but according, Steve, thank you for the call. According to the story, it was the White House that was putting pressure to to try to reach this goal, and the Marines are now saying that they they have this standard, but not enough uh, women anyway are able to match that standard. Let's go to line two. Nelson is listening on Great Radio Station WABC seventy seven in New York. Nelson, this is John DePietro, and you are up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Nelson. Hello. Hi. Um, I am calling from New York City, WBC. Um, so basically, I had a comment about immigration. Yes, sir. I heard uh, the teacher that she just said something about um, how uh, illegals are actually benefiting from um, from the taxes. You know, that Americans are paying. That is co- absolutely what, correct. Yeah. What I wanted to say is that I think it's, it's, uh, there's a mistake there. It's a misunderstanding about you know how. The contribution goes because people that immigrate legally, you know, with res- resident cars or work permits, they actually are contributing and they're paying their taxes. No, they are not. Um, no, Nelson. The number that are that are coming legally is very, very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm saying yeah. So those that, that are assigning a social security number, most of them are paying taxes because they have jobs and they, they do the deductions automatically. But Nelson, what per, what percentage is that compared to the, the real number of people that are coming in here and getting everything for free illegally? Yeah, that's, that's where I think it's a misassumption. Because actually, if a person doesn't have a social security number, how can they actually receive any public benefit? Many places it's not required. How many illegals are in the New York City school system? How many illegals go to the hospitals in your area? How many how many illegals are 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 uh, on welfare and and they're not even supposed to be here and they're not even paying taxes? Well, probably because of the school system, they do receive some type sort of benefit. But however, their parents are actually you know contributing in working to you know working for Americans that are actually paying taxes. But they're but, not paying actual taxes, Nelson. See, now, see, you seem to go along with this. Am I right? You sound like a sympathizer. That's the way you sound to me. No, no, I'm not saying I'm sympathizing, but I also, um, I don't know if you remember by, by um, back then when George W. Bush uh, was... Actually, I remember him as president. Yes. What's your question, my friend? He was making, he was actually pushing for some type of reform. Maybe, maybe not as wide open as it's happening or it's been happening. He was pushing for some sort of reform to the immigration system, and it actually was a setback because of the... Uh, right, let, let, let's not blame, start to blame past, uh, past presidents. Now, what country are you from? No, I'm not blaming him. I'm saying, I'm saying he was trying to actually fix it. And well, he failed. What country are you from, Nelson? I'm Dominican. You're Dominican. Well, you got to tell your friends that the gravy train is coming to a halt. All right? We need to stop this. Thank you for the call, Nelson. Let's go to Cheryl on Line 8, who's listening on WSBA in Pennsylvania. Cheryl, this is John DePietro. You're up next on Savage Nation. Hello, Cheryl. Hi, how are you, John? Very well, Cheryl. Proceed. Hey, I just wanted to say, I spent 20 years in the Army. I'm retired Army. Thank you for your service. Thank you. 
And all I heard the whole time was, women study this, women do this, women do that. No one ever asked the women. It was just something that came out of D.C. that the liberals thought we ought to do, we ought to want. And I say, never, ever change the standards for any Marine. We now, the Marines are under pressure to lower the standards because apparently the combat standards for women. Now, you're a woman saying 20 years in, you disagree. They should not lower the standards for women in combat. Never. Why? There's a reason for the standards. The standards have been there. Those men that sacrifice and women, they adhere to those standards and they still lost their life. You lead by example. If you can't carry it, you don't tell someone else to pull it. Thank you for the call, Cheryl. Let me go to line seven. Mike is listening on WABC in New York. Mike, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I have a few comments. I Go ahead. The state, I went for the state police test in New Jersey. The standards are definitely lowered for women. My uh, give me an example. Well, it was, it's the running and it's the jumping. It's different different heights, and that was 15 years ago. All right, the running. How fast did you have to run? Um, I don't remember. I think uh, we, I had to run two miles, and I don't remember what the time was. How do you know that the standard was different for women? Everybody, everybody was saying back then that it was different. And the height the height was 18 inches. I know theirs was six inches lower to jump. Did you pass? Oh, the height. The police officers of heights are different. You'll, you'll see a lot of short women. But it's, but it's not just that. Years ago, when I was a feminist, even though I'm a male and I was a liberal, I was told that they're going to redesign and re-social engineer America, and that's what they're doing now, and that's where what everybody has to wake up to. So it doesn't matter what the standards are. It's all about the agenda, and the end, and the end justifies the means. How long did it take you to run two miles? Uh, the, the best I ever did was, I know it was like... Nine minutes, ten minutes. My big thing was a hundred yard dash. I see. Uh, ten nine. That I can tell you. And all the women were out running you. No. The, what, what happened was when I took the gym class at Middlesex County College, I did everything superior. I did like sixty sit, uh, seven and sit ups in a minute. I had bad allergies. All right, all right. We don't need the old college stories, folks. One eight five five four hundred savage. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls coming up on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. One. 855-400-SAVAGE-1, 855-400-7282. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Remember, visit our website. It's michaelsavage.com. You can pre-order. Yes, you can. Countdown to Mecca. New book, sure to be a bestseller from Dr. Michael Savage. Available May 12th. You can pre-order it right now on the website. Pressure grows on Marines to consider lowering combat standards for women. What do you think? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line 9. Tony is listening in Colorado Springs on KVOR. Tony, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. How's it going? Very well, Tony. Go right ahead. Um, I'm a medically retired combat infantryman from the Army. Um, I'm retired due to the fact I had too many concussions uh, from roadside bombs in Iraq. And the problem with the standards is it's already um, unfair. The women already have different PT standards and all that stuff. I couldn't tell you if it applies to the Navy and the Coast Guard and the Air Force and the Marines as well, but in the Army they already have totally different PT standards. And that being said, uh, our enemy is not going to lower their standard just because we did ours. That is a t- Tony. First of all, thank you for the service. I like that. That's that's a very good point. The enemy, they're not. No, anyone that's seen ISIS, they're not going to lower their standards. Line six is Kyle listing in Dallas on WBAP. Kyle, this is John DePietro, and you're next on the Savage Nation. Hey, John. Thanks for making my call. Or taking my call. I'm welcome. My uh, my thing up a little bit. I'm also a veteran, uh, ten years in the infantry, and there's a certain psychological effect uh, that happens when a man sees a woman armed. Does that make sense? 
uh, it, it's a little bit different than seeing another man uh, harmed or killed. When we're out there on the front lines, we see a woman get hurt. We take that a little bit different. And as far as the physical aspect goes, it doesn't matter how fast you run or how many push-ups you can do. Like you said, the rope doesn't matter. What matters is I'm six foot three. If I get hit, are you going to be able to drag me out of the kill zone? And that's what it boils down to. Hmm. Very good point, Kyle. Thank you for the call. Let's talk to Patrick, who's listening on line four in Pennsylvania, WSBA. Patrick, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Patrick. John, how do you do? I'm Very glad well. that uh, I just heard that piece uh, from Kyle. Um, he is correct uh, about having someone being able to do something. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering here, after listening to all of these callers, you know, once upon a time, yes, I could climb 20 feet with the pack on my back, and I would expect everyone else around me to do it. Um, will I ever have to do it in combat? Probably not, but knowing that someone can. There was a movie called Stripes with Bill Murray where he yes. gave a very famous speech about, uh, you, know, it, you know, being able to polish a garbage can does not make a soldier. Um, as a former Marine in the infantry, I'm going to tell you what. If I can't rely on you to polish a garbage can, what can I actually rely on you to do? That's exactly right. Good point, Patrick. More of your phone calls ahead. This is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Latest news, stories that we're talking about. And if you'd like to call into the program, one 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. I was just checking this story. Did you hear about this? Six men in Minneapolis apparently now arrested, allegedly trying to join ISIS. I mean, is there anyone more evil on this planet than ISIS? Federal prosecutors allege six Minneapolis men repeatedly tried to travel to Syria to join ISIS, that there actually are recruiting people in this country that would behead all these innocent men, women, and children. What is it with Minneapolis? Didn't we? We had problems with one of the hijackers was trying to join the group of 9-11. That's why they were short one. He was the one who only went to flight school because he was just interested in how to, how to learning how to steer a jet. He didn't care about landing take off or landing just steering one and now boy minneapolis hotbed six men trying to join the most evil organization on earth coming up i'm also going to play marco rubio gave an interview where he talked about immigration we're going to talk about that but right now the marines are under pressure to possibly lower their standards because one of the tests that they seem to have that a number of women are un- un- unable to pass. Let's go out to line seven. Brian is listening on radio station WMAL in Washington, D.C. Brian, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Brian. Yes, good afternoon. Yeah, you, you keep on comparing military soldiers to uh, firefighters and police officers. There's no comparison. When you know the guys put on their Sunday go-to-war gear, it's you know, 10, 15 times what the police carry. And I, I spent 32 years in the military flying helicopters, and I've flown with a number of women, and a number of my I respected, and some of them couldn't do the mission because which, they didn't have the strength. What, which, which part of the mission? Uh, yeah, hauling gear. Yeah, you know, when when I was in uh, the Middle East, we we crawl in the cockpit, we'd have our body armor on. And the body armor wasn't like the stuff that the ground guys wore. It was like four times the weight. It was designed to basically protect you from you know, a 50 cal impact. And it was unbelievably heavy. And well, some of them had a hard time getting in and out of the cockpit. Yeah, he, thank you for the call, Brian. Well, the, the fact is, though, uh, what, what seems to be undetermined is, is whether or not is there something wrong with the standard or you know what exactly seems to be the problem. You have to keep in mind, is what I meant to say, is all, all these other nations do have women. So this business that somehow the United States, um, as I mentioned, and this was a story and I think even an editorial in the Washington Times, Danish females fought in infantry in Afghanistan, Norway, no restrictions, Canadian women, New Zealand, 
comprise 6% of the officers. Uh, those also know, for instance, Israel. It's mandatory for all young people to join the military. Let's go to line one. Bob is in Michigan listening on WJR. Bob, this is John DePietro, and you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi there, Bob. And good afternoon. Good. Hello. I wanted to make, wanted to make a quick comment. <clears throat> I'm a Vietnam veteran. I was over there two times. I was in the Subies. And as far as I'm concerned, they should not lower the standards for anything. If they, if anything, uh, if some of these civilian people uh, that's never been in the service, they get this idea, well, you know, they need to lower the standards and they need to do this and do that. What they need to do is to leave this stuff alone, let the military do what they have to do. In fact, what maybe what they ought to do is raise the standards. Well, how are they going to raise the standards if right now they seem to have a problem with uh, this one test of climbing with the upper body strength? Well, I don't, I don't know what the problem is because my, now myself, I'm a man, of course, but I never had no problems climbing. But the way I look at it, uh, you know, the old saying, if it gets too hot in the kitchen, you get out, don't you? <laughs> Thank you for the call, Bob. Let's talk to Jacqueline, who's on line four, listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Jacqueline, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, John. How are you doing? Very well, Jacqueline. Go right ahead. Um, well, I was in the Marines for five years, and um, oh. I just want to say that the standards are there for a reason. Um, when you start to lower standards, you start to lower the effectiveness of the Marine Corps as a whole. And the standards are there because people's lives depend on it. And when you start lowering those standards, you start risking people's lives. And, I mean, you know, that's obviously something that nobody wants to have happen. Now, you were in the Marines for five years. Is that right, Jacqueline? Now, were there, there are some standards that you can remember or point to that somehow were lower for you than they were for some of the men? Um, physical standards, uh, yeah, but when there was actual, like, practical application, like within my MLS, um, you know, it was either you can do it or you can't. It didn't matter if you were a male or a female. What's an example you, you could give us of... Just one quick example of, of one element where the, the standards were lower for women and another standard where they were basically the same. Um, the physical fitness test, um, women do a flex arm hang. They have a longer time to run three miles. And uh, men have to do pull-ups, and they have a shorter time to run three miles. Okay. And what's another well, example where it is all the same standard? Um, well, I mean, getting qualifications as a maintainer. I was a, um, a Huey crew chief, so... You know, you either passed your flying qualification test, you either got your wings, or you failed and you didn't get your wings. didn't hmm. matter if you were a male or a female. First of all, thank you for your service, and, and thank you for the phone call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Let's go to line six. Al is listening on WABC in New York. Al's up next on the Savage Nation. Yeah, I want to talk, uh, point out a classic uh, uh, unequal treatment uh, relating to uh, women. Uh, when when males become 18, uh, they're required to register for the draft, the selective service. Women uh, have no such requirement, and if there was a draft, there'd be no woman that would be drafted based on that because there'd be no roster. And also, in the New York City Police Department, they eliminated the physical completely. There's a medical, but not physical, and all that was done to design to allow because the woman couldn't pass the physical one time they had to do uh, seven chin-ups and uh, and uh, you had to do uh, uh, push-ups and you had to run an obstacle course all that is gone now new york city police department in order to uh, increase the number of women it's all about politically correct but w- w- why why women uh, are not required to register for selective service and men are when they become 18. Hmm. you know that that's thank you for the call out that that's that's a good point i mean i, I on on one end I mean, here you have definitely a push by to try to bring more women in in that situation, especially in common. And then, and then you have the Marines saying, if if we're going to be able to do that, we're we're going to have to lower the standard. Let's go to line three. Frank is listening on KBET in Las Vegas. Frank, this is John DePietro, and you're up next on the Savage Nation. Uh, John, I have to tell you, you are the most impressive get-to and deal with the callers I- I've ever heard in radio. Thank you very and much. I, I'm, I, and I don't like to stroke the host at all. Thank you. Uh, anyway, um, I'd like to give you a different perspective, and, and you let in well from the other caller. 
Uh, I was 75, 76. I was in the seventh grade when Title IX passed and, and equal rights. Uh, I have a very high-ranking father. I, I have a whole lineage all the way back to Franklin Pierce, my great-great-grandfather's brother. And it was, and I told my dad, I said, you know what, that, uh, these broads want, want uh, equal rights. I refused to sign my uh, civil service card for the draft because women couldn't be drafted. Uh, you throw that in. You throw in the all-woman Israelis unit that was pu- pushing Muslims back till they found out they were getting their butts kicked by a bunch of women. And then they fought w- without any res- reservation or fear for their life and pushed back. Uh, my, my point, uh, there are a lot What is of, your point? I was hoping there was one here somewhere. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, my point is, is there are a lot of things to consider. And uh, uh, we have so... The, the, the military has been cut up so much, and I do have my honorable discharge. Uh, I did see that women got a lot of more of the, the paper-pushing jobs, and, and I wasn't okay with that. Well... You know, the, 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 let's let's fast. Thank you, Frank. Let's fast forward. I mean, you have women that that are willing, able, and want to serve in combat, and and it's just now it's a matter of I- exactly what what the standards should be. That that's, you know, really what it comes down to. You you also have to look at. I mean, in 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 2015, I, I know some don't like the example of some of the other nations or police officers or firefighters but just you know go to a local gym look at the fitness competitions look at the professional athletes look at the college athletes you you i don't think it's fair to go back to the 50s or the 60s i mean everyone today seems you know stronger more fit um and and you just you didn't have that type of activity with women there were i don't think there were the, the opportunities in, in physical fitness type of situations back then that that there are now. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Sid is listening on Line 7 on WABC in New York. Sid, this is John DePietro. You're up next on the Savage Nation, Sid. I just want to say that I was a severely wounded veteran captured in Bastogne and tortured by the Germans. I don't think a woman could have gone through that because they tortured me so much. They beat me so bad that I'm totally blind and paralyzed from the uh, from all the beatings that I took from them. I don't think a woman could stand up to that. Who captured you? The Germans in Bastogne. I was in the Battle of the Bulge. I was wounded five times already, and I'm still here. I'm sitting in a wheelchair. I'm confined to it for the rest of my life, and uh, I'd do it again. How long? How do it again? How long were you tortured? Oh, they captured me about uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, it started to get dark. And uh, the last, the last thing I knew is when they smashed the back of my head open, and they left me to lay in the snow for dead. And the Graves Registration came along to pick up the dead Americans, and they saw that I was still alive. So they brought me to a field hospital, and I spent a long time in the hospital since then. I'm still going to the hospitals. I'm 90 years old, and I'm still ready to go again. Well, Sid, uh, that's quite a story. Thank you for your service to the country. That is, that is an incredible sacrifice that, that played out. Let's go to line nine. Ben is listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Ben, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ben. Yeah, John. Um, first of all, I'd like to salute uh, your last caller. How about that, Sturgis? I, I appreciate that. Um, He's blind, in a wheelchair, and he would go back, Ben, and do it again in two seconds. Yeah, I, I come from a family of warriors just like that. Uh, my grandfather was an eyewitness to Pearl Harbor. A granduncle fought in Germany. So believe me, I, I grew up in the military. Hmm. My question is... Uh, Hold on. What did you, your grandfather was an eyewitness to Pearl Harbor? Yes. He talked about it as a little boy. Um, when the Japanese planes flew over the mountain, he was working on a special project for the Department of Defense, um, a fuel depot that it was supposed to be a, a secret um, fuel depot to supply the Navy with aviation fuel and, and bunker fuel for the ships just in case um, they were bombed. But apparently they weren't fast enough. And Mm. Eventually, um, you know, he told me the story, and his uh, uh, the boss paid all 
the crew, including my grandfather, and he gave him instructions. He said, if, if they don't invade in two weeks, uh, come back to work in two weeks. But he paid them all and said, uh, buy food and ammo and huh. get ready to take your family and flee into the mountains. Wow. That's all right, now go ahead, Ben. With you. That's so very, I, I find that very, very interesting. But go ahead with your point. My, my question is, uh, first of all, uh, saluting John, who got captured in Baston. Thank you very much for your, yes. your service. Um, my question is, uh, war fighting is a dirty business, dangerous to everybody. Um, Major Rhonda Cornum, a flight surgeon, captured first Gulf War. Specialist Melissa Coleman captured first Gulf War. And then uh, Jessica Lynch captured uh, second Gulf War. I mean, my question is, when you lower the standards and you have, I mean, these women can testify you to the brutal rapes and beatings that they faced. I mean, why do you want women in combat? I mean, John can testify you himself. He just said he doesn't think a woman uh, would uh, be able to make the torture. I have to agree with uh, the World War II vet. Um, war fighting is a brutal business. Ask the women that were captured. Ask the women that were tortured. You know, and when uh, Major Rhonda Cornum gave her testimony to the panel in D.C., they were like all shocked and surprised. They're like, no, don't you know, don't tell well, us what happened to you because now it it puts a stain on pushing women into the military. Because that's the what do you think ISIS is going to do? They capture well, an American woman. So no, I I understand, Ben. Thank you for the call. We'll take more of your phone calls. One eight five five four hundred Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Our phone number, 1-855-400-7282. Nice parade in Iran. They marked Army Day, military parade, featuring new weapon system and a truck carrying a massive banner, death to Israel and death to America. Good to see that the president has got them in our corner. You know, it's a tremendous story, though, out of Salisbury, Massachusetts. Dog tags a U.S. soldier lost on a Massachusetts beach 70 years ago had been returned to his son at the same place. The military ID belonged to a World War II veteran who lost them 1939 on Salisbury Beach. And a metal detector enthusiast, those guys that walk along the beach with the black socks after everyone has left, found them after a storm and then was able to tack, uh, uh, track down the owner. The person that had lost them manned a gun during the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. Remember, our website is michaelsavage.com. All the latest news, stories. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. If you'd like to join the program, just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 7282. Log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. Latest news, articles, basically everything we talk about, everything you need to know, including your opportunity to pre order Countdown to Mecca, the new book coming soon. May 12th, it'll be available. You can pre order it now, the new book by Dr. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. You can also see many of the other bestsellers that Dr. Savage has written. Interesting story out of the San Francisco Gate regarding the situation in New York City. 
where they're finding more and more chains. New York increasingly becoming chain store city. They write, you're looking for a Seinfeld-style coffee shop? Well, it's sharing the city with 280 Starbucks and more than 530 Dunkin' Donuts. A good neighborhood deli is now competing with 460 subways. Amid eye-popping rents and the demise of a number of well-known local haunts, some activists and lawmakers are proposing new rent renewal rights for small, small businesses they see as saving the personality of the city. What about in your city or town? Should small mom-and-pop type businesses be able to just be charged a certain rent, obviously a lower rent, than some of the chains? Or should it really just be a matter of you let the marketplace dictate that government should not get involved? It's just a matter of if they want to survive, then they need to be able to compete with the chains. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. On the presidential front, Senator Marco Rubio, how about the story also that talks about, should we have potentially a president and vice president from the same state? You think a latest poll shows Jeb Bush right now as the Republican front runner? 17%. Marco Rubio, also from Florida. percent Should we have two people from the same state? But Marco Rubio did an interview, and it's in Spanish, and you're going to hear he speaks absolutely perfect Spanish. But he basically, in this interview, is saying that he supports staying the course, the path that President Obama has laid out with immigration. Let's hear a little bit. This is Senator Marco Rubio. Un momento determinado va a tener que terminar. Es decir, no puedes seguir siendo la política permanente de Estados Unidos. Yo sí creo que si salgo presidente va a ser posible lograr una reforma migratoria. No va a poder ser integral. Es decir, no va a poder ser todo en un proyecto masivo. His family has already been president. Enough. No, he's not. He's saying basically to go along with the policy. I, I think that is one of those issues that is going to remain in the forefront. For the race for president. As much as people try to spin this, don't you agree illegal immigration still comes down to as a major issue, I think, for Republican voters. As much as they try to spin it different ways and, you know, they're, the, the people are already here and we're just, you know, they're already here. We might as well try to just accommodate them and we need them for the workplace and everything else. I, I still think that there's enough people that say it's wrong, it's never going to be right, and they're going to, I think, continue to support candidates for president and other offices, but especially for president, that is not going to cave in, is not going to cave to the other side. What do you think? Give us a call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. You know, as far as... ISIS, which remains in the news. Big story right now. How about in Minneapolis? Six men have been arrested, reportedly trying to, being recruited and trying to join ISIS. And this latest video that has emerged, ISIS video shows execution of Ethiopian Christians. What kind of individual would join an organization like this. I mean, is there any other organization on earth that is as evil, that demonstrates the battle of good versus evil than ISIS? ISIS terrorists, New York Post, released the latest blood-drenched video showing the shooting and beheading of two groups of Ethiopian Christians in Libya. You will not have safety even in your dreams until you accept Islam says a masked fighter with a pistol who insists Christians must convert to Islam or pay a tax prescribed by the Quran. Our battle is a battle between faith, blasphemy, between truth and falsehood. Have we ever seen a more evil organization on earth than this? Well, maybe in Iran. How about the big army day they had? 
death to the United States were some of the floats, not exactly the Macy Day Parade. You know, this is another example. If you have ISIS actively trying to recruit people in Minneapolis, then how can we let down our guard regarding, regarding the borders? How can we have proponents that are saying that we should try to and we should maybe give driver's license to people who are not citizens? How can you have someone like a Marco Rubio? Where, you know, as much as they talk about amnesty and they talk about the fact that, uh, you know, trying to make things easy, easier and, and they should be able to, to vote, you know, they never want to really talk about the national security issue that we have. And I think when, when you have the fact that six men right in Minneapolis are actively recruited and trying to join ISIS, I, I, that, sh- that should be part of the, the argument against, against illegals right there. Let's go out to Dale, who's listening on WTMA in Charleston. Dale, you're up on the Savage no- Nation. Hello, Dale. Good afternoon, sir. Um, Hello, Dale. Thanks for taking my call. Very welcome. Here's the thing that people don't realize. It, 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 I, I, now, granted, a large, a percentage of these undocumented are doing work that people don't want to do. They're, they're working in, in dairy, the dairy industries, and they're working in farming and things like that, because you know, those are places that don't really check immigration documents very well. They're, they're, they're paid a um, you know, very low wage. And the problem is, is once you legalize um, this 11 to, to 12 million people, and, and get them out of the quote unquote shadows, as the the president puts it. They don't have to do those jobs either, and they're going to move right into mainstream jobs because they don't have to fly under the radar anymore. They're just going to continue to take uh, more jobs. And now you you know you got the drawdown of the military, and, and as it stands right now, unemployment rates being what they are, you're just going to create a whole bunch more workers for jobs that don't exist. Well, you're, thank you for the call, Dale. You're exactly right. You know another problem that comes up. And that is in law enforcement. You know, I was just reading a story where uh, those are from the Middle East complain that they're constantly being profiled here in the United States, where U.S. sees terror prevention as the headline. Some Muslims see profiling. Yet when you have the situation with the six individuals in Minneapolis that, that, I, just, that I just mentioned, that were actively trying to join ISIS and were, were, you know, looking to hook up with them and even travel to train with them. The, these are not individuals of, you know, they, they always try to point to, the other side always tries to point to, say, like a, a Timothy McVeigh type and try to say the terrorists could be everywhere. But a group of young Minnesota men conspired to sneak into Syria and join ISIS by any means uh, any means necessary. Group of friends ages 19 to 21 were arrested in Minnesota yesterday. They were not confused young men. They were not easily influenced. They're focused intent on joining a terrorist organization. Who are they? Zakira Yusuf Abdurham, 19. Adrin Fahara, 19. Hanad Masta Musi, 19. Galad Ali Omar, 20. Arrested in Minneapolis. Also arrested in San Diego after driving their hopes of crossing into Mexico. Adaram Yasin Dodd, 21. And Mohammed Asif. What, what, look at this. They're trying to cross into Mexico. You have the group of six trying to travel to Syria. You know, th- this is never brought out by the mainstream. By the mainstream media, look at how people are just coming over the border. And then at the same time, it's not your imagination. You do have people actively in this country looking to join a terror organization. And I think that, don't you think this has to be played out in the race for president? Doesn't it matter to you, whoever the candidate is you're going to support and where they stand on this? And as much as they try to cloud the issue... 1-855-400-SAVAGE. one 855 400 This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is... 
the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. If you'd like to join the program, dial us up today, one 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. Rita is listening to the program on KBET in Las Vegas. Rita, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Hi, Rita. Uh, thank you for taking my call, sir. Welcome. Uh, I am an American of Mexican ancestry, and I just wanted to say that I am fluent in Spanish. In fact, Spanish was my first language. Um, I was born here in the United States, and my parents were born here, too. But Marco Rubio, in my personal opinion, is nothing but a wolf in sheep's clothing. And the fact that he now supports what President Obama is doing via executive order is nothing new. When he ran for the Senate in Florida against uh, Meek and Christ, I heard, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, debates yes. on Univision. And at that time, he said the exact same thing that he said uh, uh, about uh, the, the amnesty, that we have to go ahead and give these people amnesty. That is why when he became senator for Florida, he joined hands with uh, Schumer and McCain and Lindsey Graham and uh, the whole gang that wants to legalize all of these illegal aliens. Could you ever support him, Rita? No, I would not, sir, and that's why I'm calling in, because I want people to know that this man is not who he represents to himself to be. This man is nothing but the Hispanic version of Barack Obama. He'll tell you anything you want to hear to get elected. Thank you for the call, Rita. Let's talk to Ron, who's also listening on KBET in Las Vegas. Ron, you're up next on The Savage. By that name. But in the meantime, yes, sir. Rita said everything so eloquently. She should be running for senator. It's unbelievable that she is. She said it perfect. Nobody could have. Hillary Clinton couldn't even come close to what she just said. But in the meantime, I'm calling up to say just about the same thing, that our borders need to be blocked up because I know so much here in Las Vegas. If you knew what I knew and the FBI knew what I knew, they would, they would wake up and they would take their feet off their desk and they would get out and start working. In what way, Ron? Well, there's a lot of things. You see, this town has about 193 different kind of countries here. So it's, in a way, if you have no, if you know the right connections and the right people, you could, can hide. Could you support someone for president? who is in favor of illegals getting voting rights and or a driver's license. No, what she just said about Rubio, I believe her, man, because you see it. Like all right. I, you know, that's that's all I'm looking for. Thank you for the call, Ron. What about you? If you're listening right now, if this is tossed out in a debate, wherever you may be listening to the program right now, could you support in this race, and it's it's going to be someone, unless there's some change on the Democrat side, against Hillary Clinton. Even though Rand Paul is talking about this blockbuster book that's going to be coming out, it's not out yet, but it has to do with the Clintons, the amount of money they receive with cash and donors and people overseas. But could you support a presidential candidate who is in favor of of voting rights and also driver's licenses for people who are undocumented, who are illegally. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. I could not. I think there's voter fraud as there is. I think there's far too much voter fraud in some of these early voting states that give people the opportunity to, to vote multiple times. I wish someone would take a stand instead of just trying to cave and get in line to benefit from, from that. How about the fact that when Border Patrol agents checked a bus passenger paper at a checkpoint, they did a double take. Do you hear about this story? 
So you have a bus passenger, hands the, the Border Patrol, driver's license, identifying himself as David, a 34-year-old man. Along with the driver's license, he had a birth certificate, social security guard. There was one problem. David, the person with the license, birth certificate, was not was not the person on the bus that had the papers. David was a fellow Border Patrol agent where his identity had obviously been compromised. This is how brazen people have become. One, eight five five, four hundred, savage. One eight five five four hundred, seven two eight two. What is in this blockbuster book about the Clintons? We'll talk about that. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Check out our website, michaelsavage.com. A lot more ahead. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Savage Nation, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. If you'd like to call into the program, why not? 1-855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number. 1-855-400-7282. That is Senator Marco Rubio talking about he basically backs President Obama on immigration and amnesty. Mark on line two is listening on WDRC in Hartford, Connecticut. Mark, you're up next on the Savage Nation, Mark. Thanks for uh, letting me voice my opinion. So I always uh, crack up when I hear that term that illegals are doing the jobs uh, that Americans don't want to do. It's not so much that, because think about this. Who, who would really want to go into plumbing? It's one of the most disgusting jobs uh, you know, that, you can, that you can participate in. But you know what it is? It's the pay and sometimes benefits. So it's not so much the jobs we don't want to do. It's the, uh, it's, you know, working for the least amount possible. So here's my observation at 55, throughout the decades, and I'm going to say majority so I don't get in trouble. The majority of people who have the biggest problem with illegals in this country are conservatives. Now, being a contractor for 37 years, those I would say most of the people I work on the high end, so when I walk into these homes that are more than 500 grand on up, you know, these people are doctors and lawyers, they're business owners, they're, they're big contractors, let's say, who do you think utilizes illegal immigrants the most? Whether it's personally at their home, you know, we have a big joke, a couple of my the guys that work for me, we always go out of our way to speak to the housekeepers. And, you know, we, we try to entice them with working in our own homes. So of course, we can't afford housekeepers. And I'll be honest with you, we all know they're working underneath the table. And these people who decide to hire them, they know it. The landscapers, we do the same thing on some of these really big homes. You know, they got three or four or five guys out there for hours. You know, Mark, you, but, but Mark, you only seem to look at it in terms of, of work. It's it's a lot more than, than that. It's also, you, you, you say, you know, who's against it. It's It should be anyone that pays taxes. Don't you understand it affects the schools? When's the last time you go had to take someone to go to, to a hospital? And how long did you have to wait in the emergency room? How about police? How about the accidents? Because people that don't have a license that are here illegally, you're, you're looking at the you're you're wrong because you're only looking at this one way. Do you understand? Well, I understand your point, but if they weren't making money here, if these people didn't take advantage of them, so again, these wealthy people, they would have no business. Well, I wouldn't say they have no business being here. They wouldn't want to be here, and they wouldn't want to drag their their you know moms and dads and kids or whoever else with them. Well, you, you, thank you for the call. You can't just say these these wealthy people, and there, there are plenty of them that come here that, that actually don't work. I, I think you, you, you seem to have a one-sided view with this, and it seems to be, you know, the, the homes of people that you're doing work in. As far as who would want to be a plumber, who would want to be a plumber? Try calling one on a Sunday or a holiday, and they tell you it'd be 70 bucks to come out and, and fix something. I think there's plenty of people that would like to, to be a plumber. Annie is calling on line six. She's in Louisiana, listening on KAOK. Annie, this is John DePietro, and you're up next on the Savage Nation. Yes, in my opinion, that's all we have to do is take down the fine on the sensitivity, and people uh, of the United States can let in who they want to let in and deport the ones they want out. But that sign says, Everybody's welcome, and that's not the way the people want it. 
Uh, no, and that's not the way it's ever been, and that's not the way it should be. And any, as far as you know, the, the the Statue of Liberty, if anything, you know, that's how, how long ago was that? I, I mean, think of now how many people are actually coming. They're coming south of the border. They're not coming in through New York, or they're coming on expired visas. They're not just coming in through New York. And keep in mind, Annie, the people that did come in, they didn't have social welfare programs. They didn't go on food stamps. They had to work. They had to stay with family. And what else? They they had to learn the language. So thank you for the call, Andy. As far as the Statue of Liberty, I mean, that's that's from the Godfather movie where where he looks up. 1-855-400-7282. Don is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Don, this is John DePietro, and you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Don. I'm a fan of immigration, and um, I'm not a believer in amnesty, though, but I was a police officer, and I served uh, as a community policing officer, and I worked four neighborhoods, and one of them was um, top to bottom. Everyone inside there was an illegal alien, uh, illegal immigrant coming from Mexico, and they were from straight from Mexico. And the other three neighborhoods were all um, Americans, uh, your typical um, American living in apartment complexes. And I spent eight hours in these places, and I went from one to the other to the other. Um, in the one place that where all the residents were from Mexico, um, um, uh, often I would I, I would talk to my other officers and, and say that there was really they would ask me what is it like working in there. I'd say it's really no different than working with the Americans in the other three apartment complexes. And I guess my point is is that um, I always think this um, debate is a little disingenuous. That if we make these people, we give them amnesty, we turn around. All of a sudden, we make them Americans. That they're going to turn around and live the American dream. And my experience is, I just don't think it would be the case because, to me, they were no different than the Americans in the exact same positions they were. Those Americans who were already Americans weren't raising themselves up. Not the vast majority, of course. There's always some who do, uh, who do but um, I just think if we turned around and we gave them amnesty, um, we wouldn't see them flooding out of those apartment complexes. They wouldn't become living the American dream. I think they would stay just where they were. And I think in some ways, if we were to give them amnesty, we might even shackle them, shackle them to that place. But Don, not only that, I, I think the the biggest difficulty is how do you then stop the, the, the onslaught, the, the, the invasion from, from being up to even another level if you yeah. hear that the open bar is going to continue, that the, the free buffet is about to kick in the gear. That that's, thank you for the call, that to me, don't you think that's really the biggest danger here? It's not even the people that are here, it's their friends and family, the word goes out. That the party is on. Now is the time to jump in. Everything's free, right? That's what to, to them. That's what freedom means. Sherry is in North Carolina, listening on WFNC. Sherry, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very well, Sherry. Go right ahead. I'm an immigrant, and uh, when I became a citizen, Cincinnati, Ohio, made me show my ID before I voted. Where are you from? Um, I'm actually um, Hispanic from Trinidad. And how long have you been in this country? Oh, my gosh. I came here when I was 14, so I've been here a long time. And um, I fully agree that um, I, I don't like what's going on. My parents came from Europe, came here legally, had to show. It's a long story, but... You agree that they should not be given the opportunity to vote? No amnesty. Absolutely not. Right. They should not be allowed to vote. And, Sherry, the reason is, is because then it just becomes a game. Whoever would promise them the most freebies, that's who they basically would vote for. I mean, that's already been going on, but it would be condoning it even more. You're not allowed to. We were told the rule is when you come here as an immigrant, you cannot get any freebies. Well, but you know, thank you for the call, Sherry. I mean, we all know. That is hardly the situation. That is hardly the scenario. And in many parts of the country, they they do vote, and they are given a chance to vote. And there's so many fraudulent documents, and there's so many fraudulent. Oh, you know, it's it's in process right now, and all this other stuff. It's um, it's it's a crime. It's a crime because it's not enforced. And then everybody's fr- how can they not be frustrated? One eight five five. 400 Savage 1 855 400 
888-900-3282. K on line two is listening in New Mexico on KKOB. K, this is John DePietro. It's your turn on the Savage Nation. Hello, K. Oh, hi, John. I'm really excited. Oh, great. Um, we have uh, lots of illegal aliens uh, living throughout New Mexico. And um, what's happening is they come in. A lot of these illegals will come in and set up small businesses uh, under the radar. And we're talking uh, cleaning, uh, yard work, uh, manual labor, things like that. And they're displacing the Hispanics. I mean, our, our Hispanics are the majority that are living here, and they're upset with all of this uh, taking over of illegal Mexicans coming up into this area. And we have increased burglary. We have guns, you know, gunshots, killings, knifing, homeless. Um, it's just uh, really sad. It's just tragic, and it shouldn't be happening, and it mustn't happen. And we're a poor state, and I would say approximately a third of this state is already on welfare, and then we get all of this influx coming over that are getting the free freebies and on vacation here. And, Kay, does anyone speak up against it? Any of our political leaders in New Mexico? Not really. Uh, our governor does. She has been trying to uh, say that they cannot get driver's licenses. And, of course, our state is democratic through and through, and uh, the legislature won't budge on that. And um, so we do have some Republicans, and they have been the ones to uh, try and uh, get the bills into committees in order to... Um, get a vote on the license and finally did and was voted down. What, uh, what is happening to many of the Latino businesses as a result of this? Pardon me? What is happening? You said the illegals are setting up small illegal businesses. Who, what, what's happening to a lot of the Latinos that were already operating the business? Well, this is how it works. Um, like well, just, the, just quickly, I mean, is, are, they going, are they going on welfare? Are they working for them? How, what exactly is happening to those small businesses? Well, for instance, uh, we have a small business cleaning that's legal, but if you can get cheaper work, then yeah. that company will hire the cheaper Mexicans. I see. Thank you for the call, Kay. What about line four? Greg is in Reno, listening on KKOH. Greg, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. How are you doing? Very well, Greg. Go right ahead. Okay. Well, first off, I would never vote for anybody that wants to give illegal aliens driver's license, amnesty, uh, social security, voting rights, etc. And i got to tell you, I am so sick and tired of clowns like the wall banger who want to go to bat for the loser Republicans like Juan McShean, Rubio, Jeb Bush, etc. And they want to bring in as many as they can, even if they're illegal aliens. So you got those loser Republicans, you got the clowns, they want the cheap labor. And me, personally, I'd put an end to all immigration, all visas, revoke the citizenship of all these rotten little jackpot babies, put an end to birthright citizenship, throw them out along with all the Muslims who want to kill us because we're not Muslims. And I don't know I've got to say this. Thank you for the call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1 855 Four hundred seven two eight two. Mike on line one is listening on WMAC in Georgia. Mike, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yeah, hi. First, I'll make a comment to Mark, the guy that led this off. Uh, he tipped his hand to, to being a liberal by saying, you know, how rich people are taking advantage of all the illegals. Mark, if you do things legally in the United States of America, no one can ever take advantage of you, my friend. So that's my lesson for you. I'm a, I'm a Canadian that now lives in the United States and is a very proud American passport holder. I'm a citizen and I vote here. And if you want to make all these illegals come out of the shadows, fine. They can pay what it costs me to hire lawyers to become an American citizen. They can, I can be reimbursed that money instead of us just giving back these earned income tax credits. And, uh, yeah, no way ever should they be allowed to vote, period. 
If you want to come to this country legally, no problem. You can vote. You can do it the great way and become part of this great society. But if you want to come here illegally, there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay to become an American and be proud to be here. And we're making it a joke to become an American. It used to be a point of pride. Thank you for the call, Mike. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can join our program, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go out to Josh, who's listening to the Savage Nation on KVOR in Colorado Springs. Josh, hello. Hello, John. Thank you for taking my call. You're very welcome. And thank you for your service to our country. Thank you. I just wanted to make a quick comment about illegal immigrants that would come in um, from Mexico and ask for services for our call. And we would go out there for domestic violence or whatever it may be, uh, their request for service. And then you can't charge the immigrant um, with any kind of a crime that they requested for you to come out there to charge them with um, because they don't have a true identity. So basically, you just let the fish go back into the water. Uh, (laughs) You catch them and you let them go. They call and they want your help and you come out there and you break up whatever may have happened, anyone else would get arrested and charged with a crime. They don't. You let them go, you let them drive off in their illegal truck and without insurance, with their license plates expired. It's crazy. And now we have a, uh, we have a potential candidate running for president that people are saying we should elect just because she's a woman. <laughs> and she's a uh, helped with the amnesty to these illegal immigrants that we cannot charge with anything. You know, good. Thank you for the call, Josh. You know, I hear this from law enforcement at the same time that they'll arrest someone and it could be even a charge of shoplifting or whatever. They have to let them go and they know they're not going to show up for court. Check out the website, michaelsavage.com. Your chance to pre-order Countdown to Mecca. It's going to be available May 12th. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation.